Welcome to WeWeb 3.0. 3.0 introduces the brand new WeWeb AI. Now, the new chat interface will be the focal point of your building process. Getting started with WeWeb AI is as simple as prompting it for what you want to be on the page. Now the AI will be creative when it comes to creating interactivity on the page. It will automatically add a hover states to elements, create variables and bind them where necessary, and even set up workflows to cater for the functionality on your page. Now there'll be times when you want to adjust or add things to the generations. If you want to change something about a very specific element, it's as simple as clicking on the element to pass it in as context with your prompt. Or if you'd like to make a more general change, simply prompting the AI to do so without passing in any context of elements. Here on my task list page, I want the AI to add a status filter select. And so I'll prompt it to do so. And just like that, a status filter select has been added to our page and the filtering is already pre-set up. Now the AI can do a lot more than just help us iterate at a page level. Whenever we have a formula window open, the formula is automatically passed in as context to the AI and the AI is aware of all of the data inside of our project. So we can ask the AI to create very specific contextualized formulas. And the same goes for workflows. Whenever we're inside of a workflow, the workflow is automatically passed in as context to the AI. And because the AI has full knowledge of all of the data inside of our project, you can iterate with the AI to create hyper-contextualized workflows. Now, when you're building with the AI, you might run into situations where you need elements with very specific functionality. On my page here, I have a slider. And since this slider already exists in WeWeb's native elements, the AI can very easily include it in generations. However, in this example, WeWeb doesn't have a native element for a dual range slider, but the AI can help us get around this by generating custom coded components. Custom coded components are great when we need elements with very specific and sometimes advanced functionality. In the case of the dual range slider, because you can drag the slider, the logic is quite complex and thus we would need a component. So here, I'll ask the AI to generate a component. Once our component has been generated, we can drag it onto the page like so. Now the unique thing about custom coded components is that they have designated properties. When we view them in edit mode, we can see they have both styling options and settings options. And as with everything else up to this point, we can iterate on the custom coded components with AI. So in the case of this dual range slider that it's generated, the circular handles on either side don't have a fill color. And I can see this hasn't been included as a possible setting that I could change. So I'll go back to the chat interface and ask the AI to change it. And here it's asked me whether or not I want to update this instance or all instances. Now in the settings that we saw of the component, if it had have actually included the option to have the handles be filled, then I would only want to update this instance. But since it hasn't included it in any of the settings, then we need to update the core code of the component. And because of that, I want to update all of the instances, which will update the actual code itself. And from here, we could iterate with AI to hook up our working custom coded component with the existing logic on the page. And last but not least, with the release of WeWeb 3.0 comes the new backend panel. Here, you can directly integrate with your backend, which means WeWeb AI also has context of your backend. For now, it's just Superbase, but we'll introduce more providers in the future. To get started, it's as simple as pressing connect Superbase. You'll be redirected to Superbase where you have to authorize the necessary permissions. Then once done, you'll be redirected back to WeWeb. You'll then have the option to select an existing project in your Superbase workspace or create a brand new project. In my case, I need to create a brand new project. And when you're creating a new project, it can take a few minutes to set up. Once that's done, you're all set to go. So now I want to integrate my backend with my tasks page. So I'll load up the chat I had where I created the tasks page, just so WeWeb AI again has all the context it needs and I'll then prompt it to incorporate the backend. In order for the AI to interact with our backend, 
we need to run queries on its behalf. Here, it's gave us a query that will create our tasks table and also a function that updates some of the metadata. If you're ever not sure of what one of these will do, you can hover the tooltip on the right hand side and it will tell you exactly what will happen. This is exactly what I want. I want the tasks table, so I'll deploy this. And we can see in the backend panel, our new tasks table. Now I'm going to want to use the data from this table inside the task list on this page. And the best way to do that is via collection. In the chat interface where we created the table, there's a handy one click to create a collection. Now that we have our tasks collection that's pulling data directly from our backend, I'm going to prompt the AI to populate our backend with mock data and then prompt it to update our page so that it uses the tasks collection and not the variable that it's currently using. And switching from WeWeb to Superbase and back, I can see all of our mock data is being pulled in correctly. And whenever we asked the AI to use our new tasks collection, it automatically adjusted our search and filtering functionality to work with our collection. So this was an extremely brief run through of the new WeWeb AI. In the coming weeks, we'll have deep dive videos on every single aspect of WeWeb AI, but for now, we can't wait to see what you do with it.